Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind? Remember, we're a podcast to get you to stop and think about your leadership journey, and we're going to add value by speaking to amazing guests with amazing stories and experts in their field. So today we're speaking to Eli. How are you doing, Eli? You okay? Hi, Stu. Good to see you again, my friend. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Yeah. So Eli was one of my colleagues in the military, um, and I'm going to big him up a little bit now because I've been talking recently about my skill sets and the um, things that I'm doing now have come from the great environment that the military provided, um, but also the great leaders um, that were in there as well. And Eli was at the stage of like senior instructor when I was going through and a, a few years behind you. So Eli, let's get straight in. So the people who don't know you, um, just introduce yourself for us. Yeah, no problems. Hi everybody, uh, my name's Eli. I was, um, I was in the Royal Air Force, similar to Steve, for 22 years from the age of 18. Uh, I left the Air Force 10 years ago. But I guess in that time, I was working probably most of my time in, in the outdoor, the adventure, tra adventure training environment. So we were taking people into areas, what I call now discomfort, into fairly challenging places. Uh, so where they, they were tired, cold, wet, hungry. And then we sort of, we would look and facilitate how these teams, how these leaders re reacted in those situations. So traveled all around the world, met some great people, had some great experiences myself. Um, yeah, it's just helped me, Stu, I think, along my own journey of, of some of the places I've been and some of the experiences I've been involved in, and some things I've learned and some of the things I've done not so well in my time. It's been a great journey, yeah. So I've done that for 22 years and decided to need um, a fresh challenge, and then I left. And I've been working with wounded, wounded injured, and sick soldiers for the past five years, and then I've been working for a company called Gaia Insights that's based in Switzerland, but we're all dotted all over Europe. We all work from home, like many of us now. <laughs> but we are a leadership development company and we work with, um, you know, big organizations on culture change programs, leadership development programs. So it's been a great journey so far, so yeah. Amazing, and yeah, and we're gonna dig into that. I think we're gonna pick up on the um, some of the transferable skills from the military into the corporate world as well. So Eli, let's, let's stick to our first two questions then. So obviously, hashtag leadership, what's on your mind? When you hear the label and the, the subject talked about leadership, what does come to your mind? Yes, it's a good question, isn't it? Because I guess if you asked me that question 15 years ago, it would have been different to what it is 10 years ago, to five years ago, to maybe a year ago. And I guess the key thing is, is if I think about leadership, um, I think about adaptability. I think about reacting to what's in front of you. And I've certainly learned that over the years uh, and some of the jobs I've done and some of the people I've worked with, like I said, it's about having that flexible approach and having many hats. And you can talk about all the various leadership models and the theories behind it. But I guess what it's taught me over the years is that ability to be flexible and adaptable to what's in front of you. And, um, I think some of the jobs I've done, like we mentioned in the past, but also since I've left the military and that transition, you know, which we'll talk about a little bit later, has been really interesting for my own leadership journey and my own growth uh, and learning about what leadership is for other people as well. But I think for me, it is about being flexible and adaptable. Mm. Yeah, awesome. I like that. I like that. I like the simplicity of it as well. But obviously, there's a complex meaning behind it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's stay with you personally. And, and again, I'm really interested in this because I potentially know a lot about your skill set in the military, but maybe not before that. <coughs> um, I'm sure we've probably had discussions over a beer in Germany skiing at some point. But yeah. um, where do you think your leadership journey started? So whether it's on reflection or was there a point of time in, in the past? A lot of people go quite far back here. So I'm really interested to see where do you think your leadership journey started? No, it's good, Steve, because I talk about this quite a lot. I talk about me as a young young man and I can remember making the decision to join, join the Royal Air Force as a physical training instructor. Like I remember my parents sitting me down and saying, I don't know if that's you. Do you feel you can do it? I was shy i was very introverted as a young man and then i can remember joining and getting through and i think my my physical background my sporting background got me through and i was passionate and energetic about stuff but i guess it was 18 when i went on my pti course so rf cosford which we know well mm. and the first time i was placed in front of 16 recruits to take a warm-up i was well i was actually 17 at the time i was, I was probably i was 17 and a half you know i did I, I didn't i was like that i was like a beanpole 
Um, I wasn't particularly confident. And I can remember my, my own leadership journey starting right there of, of thinking, how am I feeling right now? I've got to now give these guys a 20 minute warm up. I'm so nervous and just bubbling inside. And it was, that's probably my first experience when I felt what leadership is about, how people find it. It's, it's, it's a challenging place to be when, you, when you're in front of people and you're expecting them to go to a place that you want them to go, whether that's through direct orders or just say, come with me on this journey. And I guess it started there. And then throughout my career, my, I spent three years on my first base at RAF Bryce Norton. And I guess throughout that time, I built the confidence. I, burnt, I built up skills around what leadership was. And also I started finding my own style of what leadership was. And I guess for me, the big game changer, and we both worked at this place, was a place called Fairbourne in, in Mid Wales, where it was, um, it was then it was called a, a forced development training centre, which you know, if you think about it, what does it mean? But ultimately, it's like a step, as I said at the start of the call, we were getting recruits coming through and basic training, officer training, and we were taking them out to the great environment, into the great outdoors for five days and giving them some amazing experiences through climbing, walking, in the sea, you know, down in mines, and again, asking them to sort of react to what's in front of them, which for them was probably a very challenging environment. And the more we got used to it, and the more I got used to it, it's a very simple, safe environment. You know, we need to make some, some key decisions around it. But I guess watching other people, watching how I reacted to, to their growth, and also how I done my role and how I kept them safe, taught me a lot about leadership, I think. And I look back and, and some of the sort of scrapes that I got, and I'm, I don't mind admitting this to you, some of the things I'd done, I got away with. I'm thinking, wow, I don't want to do that again. Yeah. But guess what? It taught me so much. It taught me good judgment. It taught me some of the things that I should and shouldn't be doing. And I guess from there, I just continued to grow and I stayed within that world, within that outdoor environment. And I'm a big believer that putting yourself into this challenging environment where whether it's going into, you know, like we did on many times into the, the Alpine ski touring environment when you've got a massive risk of avalanche, a massive risk of, of injury to everyone around you. So you put in this high risk environment. And I'm a big believer that, you know, if you want to develop your own leadership, it's about putting yourself out there, wherever that is. And it could be just, you know, within your team and your organization, or like I did for many years, put myself into that challenging outdoor environment where I learned so much about myself and about other people. And I think that's a key thing. I learned about people, how different people react in their situations, which I think, yeah, I can use that for the role I was doing, but also I can take a lot, a lot of stuff away myself. Yeah, amazing. Do you know what? That's just reminded me of two things, actually, that you've picked up on your personal growth through being at the Outward Bound Centre, because I'm really passionate about telling people about how the military use the medium of the Outward Bounds to develop their people. Mm. But you just reminded me about the, the accelerated learning that we had as instructors, because you do have those that roller coaster journey. There were no group was the same. No sort of environment was the same that we went into. And also talking about challenging people. I remember you've probably got lots of stories about this as well, mm -hmm. about having somebody out walking, mat reading for 10 hours. And then we had to stay overnight and somebody just breaking down and crying on a regular basis that they were having to sleep in a tent in the middle of nowhere in, in North Wales. And you for us and for the people that would be we're, we're resting now, we're in a tent. But people's perception of, oh, my, I've just been struggling for 10 hours and I'm now going to put a tent up and sleep in it. And um, quite a, an, a powerful environment that we were able to create for them. Yeah, it was. And it, it was tough, wasn't it? When we look back, our job was to create tough, challenging moments for these people like all of us. And I think that that's where the power of, of leadership growth lies, because we're all you know, whatever we look at facing this, this pandemic right now, we're all doing things very differently. We're all out of our comfort zone in so many areas. Talking right now on Zoom is very different for many of us. And sometimes if we shy away from that, are we, are we really developing our own leadership? Are we really developing our own growth? And I think it's about sometimes self-checking and saying, what can I do to continue on this journey? And I think that's what we've done really well in that, in that world was continually challenge people. You know, and we talked about this sometimes, was it perceived fear or, or perceived risk or actual risk? Well, it was a lot of perceived, you know, sometimes when you're tired, you're wet, you're cold, you're hungry, you're in an environment where there was a lot of risk around you, but that was mainly born out of a mental mindset. 
but also we would go into areas of real risk. And the key decisions that people made, the key decisions that we've done within our teams to support each other as leaders and as team members played a massive part, really massive part. And I, I'm, again, you know, I'll go back to the original question. I'm so grateful for that, that exposure, which I feel now has helped me massively in you know, talking a little bit about what leadership means to me. It is about being adaptable. It is about being flexible. It is about assessing your environment, whatever that is, and thinking, what, what skills do I need to draw on right now? And I think our background, that's what helped us achieve. I look back at all the different scenarios and situations I was in, I'm thinking, yeah, I can use a little bit of this now. I need to remain calm under pressure because guess what? These six people behind me are looking for me to, to drive this and, and drive that calmness. Although inside I was thinking, this is serious. This is, you know, if you don't get this right, there's a lot of risk going on. There's a lot of potential for this to go horribly wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember I don't know if you was on that trip, we, we spent a, a time ski touring in the Alps where we had a massive dump of snow and myself and a, a close friend called Scott Simon took a group across these, these mountain ridges in Bavaria. And there was avalanches going off all around us. And we could sense the tension in the group is a group of eight, I think, and myself and Scott was leading. And we said to ourselves, now we need to be calm. Now we need to remain and show that we're in a, in a strong mental position where we can give these guys confidence because they need to be on their game. We need to focus on what we're doing. We need to be completely present. And it worked. And, you know, again, I'm just grateful for them experiences and their moments in, in my career when, when I look back, it was difficult. It was challenging, but it's taught me so much. Do you know what? You've, you've triggered my mind. I'm going to be going a thousand miles an hour after this because the, you're right. I think all adventure training instructors have got those moments where maybe it wasn't going quite right and you had yeah. to. Um, there's a couple of states where, where we say about the importance of training mm. and routine and processes. And I've got one where I, I actually went through some processes and then something happened and I'm so pleased that I kept to processes, procedures, and I reflected on like, wow, that is why we go through so many times those processes, those procedures, because in those environments we were in, um, things can go I'm going to say wrong is probably not the right word, but things can change quite quickly. Can't they? And you've got to adapt to that. Yeah. And I think sometimes, Stu, that the perception maybe years ago with the military style of leadership was that it was one way, direct, listen to me, you know, whatever I say, we go, which is necessary at times. But I do feel over the years, the military has developed their, definitely their, their leadership styles around, let's assess what's in front of us, just make a real dynamic assessment on this let's just give ourselves some time we talk about these these condor moments of taking a step back and thinking right i need to look at this situation and, and give myself and my people time to make the right decision and i think the military is moving definitely in that way where it's making more dynamic decisions based on on the way they move forwards which is great you know yeah it's really really good to see do you know what there's quite a few guests recently actually on the podcast that have been talking about leadership has changed and we're talking like it's changed over 20 years. And and suppose you mentioned about the, the the modern way of doing things now, the new norm of communicating over mediums like this. And it's heightened the fact that we're going to have to adapt as leaders, as teams, as organizations, and to keep everybody together. Um, so let me, what are your thoughts then about, because obviously we're going to be talking about more levers of the military environment. What is your um, sort of thoughts or observations about those transitions of coming out of the military and seeing what's happening? I call it the military bubble. <laughs> what's been going on? You, you've been out a lot longer than I have and working with some amazing people, amazing organizations. What are the similarities, but obviously what are the differences as well? Yeah, good question. I, I, I guess, again, again, it's been a journey I've left for 10 years. And I guess when I first left, my perception around what leadership was has changed again massively. I feel the transitions that I've gained from being in the military has been that adaptability, that flexibility, you know, for, for different organizations, different type of, of people. And I do think maybe leadership has changed and it's more centered towards the person as opposed to the leader now. So the person, Stu Wannington, you know, you can be a leader, but guess what, you, you know, discovering who that person is and what's your 
your strengths, your areas of improvement, what drives you, what, what some things you're good at and, and not so good at. And I think that's what I've learned over the past certainly three or four years is around leadership for me is, is tending to go towards the person right now. And I do a lot of work in my current role around balance and well-being. And if we can get people to a level of balance and well-being, you know, and if I ask the question, what is balance? That's going to be so different for everybody. But we're launching a program shortly around this to say, if you want to be a great leader and continue to be a great leader, then your own personal levels of balance and well-being is so important because if you're able to show up the best version of yourselves every single day, that's consistent. That's what, for me, real leadership is. And again, I think I mentioned that we can have all of the various theories and tools in place but if you're not driving it from within and whatever's affecting your levels of balance it's going to have a big impact on you and your teams so i guess that's what i've seen is that shift towards it's now about the person there is not one style that fits each leader it's about that leader learning okay what works for me like for me i'm a very flexible adaptable leader because of my past experiences and if we look at everybody else and their, their leadership journey we've all got different stories but I guess it's reflecting on what's helped me, what have I learned, what am I good at, what things can I maybe work on and improve, but ultimately recognising your strengths and who you are. Yeah, I love that. And, and again, uh, I've been talking to people and listening to what's being talked about. And it, it, people are starting to talk and it fits into what you're saying about the people, about vulnerability mm. and actual a bit more openness and a bit more honesty. Like we're all human. I think the human element is even more important and even more prevalent now in how people are succeeding in, in leading themselves. You mentioned that's really important and leading others. Yeah, it, and as you know, we sometimes talk about, uh, Brenny Brown talks about the coat of armor that we wear, wear and, and being vulnerable, or some people talk about the mask, you know, we're all wearing masks now, but do we continue to keep a mask on? And do you, do you ever take that, that mask of being a CEO of an organization or, you know, senior executive, do you ever take it off? Mm. And guess what? Sometimes if you're un unable to take that off, that can be that can be hard. That can be really, really, you know, it can weigh you down yeah. and it can have an effect. And we talk about stress and we talk about burnout and you know, we're, all, we're all facing different challenges right now. And I think it's having that ability to recognize I am a person. I am who I am. And this is what I need to do to help myself switch off. This is what I need to do to help myself be the best person I can possibly be when I show up as a leader. Yeah. And awesome. So we've got three minutes left. And wow, three minutes cool. flies by. So I want to get a couple of quick things out of you. So yeah. people who are listening to this are wanting to level up um, their leadership. They're wanting to um, be sort of challenged to think differently, look at the different perspectives. So what are some of the things that you would get quick, simple things for somebody to really level up their leadership journey? What should they be doing to keep that journey stepping forwards? I think um, number one is, is don't be afraid of, of failure or, you know, of putting yourself out there. We, we've talked about this. It's about putting your head above the parapet, I guess, and, and you know, learning from them experiences. It doesn't matter. We've all been on that journey ourselves. And I guess it's about looking at you, looking within. And I guess the question I would ask is, uh, you as a leader, what's your purpose? What, what internally drives you as a person? And I think once you start to understand that, what drives you, you're able to really start shaping your true leadership style and your true leadership growth. So yeah. I guess that's why I say it in a nutshell. And, uh, and I'm only using that for my own experiences, you know, that's what's helped me along the past 25 years, whatever it's been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So regards to you personally, you've alluded to it and I talk about it a lot about there's no end point to this journey. Mm. It's all about keeping moving forwards. And I spoke a lot about when I left the military, I really wanted to keep that journey of discovery, listening, surrounding myself with great people to keep that button point oh sorry finger on the pulse if you like mm -hmm. um so how do you keep yourself learning developing moving forward in what you're doing i think Stu, it's the, the environment that you create it's being curious so i say yeah curious in the environment i think it's having the right people around you that, that constantly challenge you and give you that feedback that not only sometimes it's great to hear that feedback but it's, it's being constructive and thinking yeah i want to do something with this as opposed to sort of barriers up 
And I think it's about continuing to be curious. And I probably read more books in the last five years that I read in my sort of 25 years previous to that, because I'm, I'm hungry to learn. I'm hungry to learn new methods. And also, maybe I've got to the age where I'm a little bit more spiritually aware of who I am. Um, and being okay to show up as, as, as a real me and take my mask off and not think that I need to show up as this. Because I guess that's what I'd done in my early years. It was I, I pretended to be something that I wasn't. Mm. So, wow. yeah, I think my, 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 my journey has, has really just gone through the roof in the past five years, and I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, and do you know what? That's the sort of things that people can, that realisation and that adding so much value to you as a person that's going to impact others around you, mm. that only happens if you keep looking for education, looking for opportunities to learn and develop. Um, so that's amazing. Awesome. So Eli, that's 20 minutes. Wow. Thank you so that's much good. for joining me on the podcast. Um, it's been a pleasure to host you. So guys, if you're listening on your podcast provider, make sure you hit us a follow. It'd be amazing if you could um, add a review. But I'm really interested to hear your takeaways from each of the episodes. If you're watching us on the YouTube channel, hi. Um, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell. And every Wednesday when these podcasts goes out, go out at 6 a.m., you'll get a notification and my vlogs are currently going out on um, Monday at 6am as well. I'm going to put all Eli's links in the comments below. So make sure you go and check out um, his stuff that he's getting involved in. The balance and well-being is absolutely amazing. All the links will be down there to go and check him out. Eli, thank you so much again. Pleasure, Stu. It's always a pleasure, my friend. Yeah. Excellent. Right, guys, I will see you all next week. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.